Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Apple iPhone 5S. This is Apple's new top-end smartphone. This replaces the iPhone 5 and is joined by the plastic iPhone 5C just below it. So the 5S adds some important new features, including Touch ID, which reads your fingerprint and can be used to unlock the device or used as your password to get into the iTunes Store and hopefully other things in the future. This also has a new A7 CPU, which is a 64-bit processor, which doubles the performance on both the graphics and the CPU side of performance. We also have two new cameras. We have a new front-facing camera, 1.3 megapixels, and we have a new 8 megapixel rear-firing camera, which gets a new f2.2 lens and a uh, sensor with larger pixels. So those pixels are now 1.2 microns, uh, which gives you better low-light performance. There's a lot of new uh, features in terms of camera performance as well in, in software. It's got uh, digital stabilization and that sort of thing. We're going to demonstrate that in this video. So this is available in uh, 32 gig or 16, 32, and 64 gig so off contract that's 649 749 and 849 uh, i do have the 32 gig version this happens to be the at&t or gsm version now the 5s is available in three colors space gray which replaces slate which was kind of a blue darker color we also have gold and we have the existing silver and white version so we have three colors to pick from they're all the same price gold is the most popular right now and i couldn't secure one like i wanted to and this is not the official phone this is just the rear shell of it it gives you an idea of the coloring and this is also the iphone 5 but the coloring is the same so it gives you an idea of the color differences and we're going to take a look at that in this video so let's go ahead and unbox this and take a look so they did have to activate this in the store so we couldn't leave the store without activating it so it was open for me so here is the iPhone 5S. You can see it's got that uh, space gray color, very different than that slate color. And I do have a slate color device we can compare this to. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So let's take a look at the packaging before we get to the foam. So we do have our ear pods complete with the carrying case, just like the iPhone 5. We have our wall adapter, which still is that uh, has that uh, yellow indicator, green indicator, telling us that this is not one of the recalled units. That dates back quite a few years now. And we have our USB to lightning connector for charging and syncing your device. Now we also have our literature underneath our plastic tray designed by Apple in California. It looks like they've changed this design a little bit. It's still an envelope, but it doesn't open up completely. You can see our literature inside, iPhone 5S, and looks like uh, this is the white and silver version, actually very nice. So it just points out the buttons, and it points out Touch ID. Uh, and we, we're going to take a look at it, of course. Uh, Apple in, or iPhone info, and of course we have our Apple stickers. Now I know I have a lot of international viewers here and you're probably wondering where is the SIM ejection tool and unfortunately we don't get that on the carrier locked versions in the US. So this is the AT&T version, we don't get that SIM ejection tool. So I guess they don't expect us to replace the SIM. Alright, so we have our phone, so let's go ahead and lift up our screen protector. And we're going to lift up the other screen protector on the back. Alright, so let's take a close look. Now the first thing that jumps out to me is this new home button. So this is integrating Touch ID. So they've redesigned the home button. So you can see they've removed that square pattern from the center of the home button. It's also surrounded by this metal ring. Now the metal ring is actually color keyed to the to the body of the phone. So you have the space gray metal ring matching the space gray of the body of the phone. So this would be gold if you got the gold phone, silver if you got the silver phone. This has a sapphire crystal lens, so it kind of looks a little bit different or reflects the light a little differently than the rest of the phone. So it does stand out a little bit. Uh, it's not as integrated. So for example, if you look at something like the iPhone 5 here, you can see we have our home button here, which is that, is that convex shape with that uh, square icon in the center. This is just kind of more flat, and you got that metal ring around it. So it feels a little smaller just because it's kind of in the same overall footprint of the existing home button, but the button itself is slightly smaller for that ring. Now that ring is there to, uh, to allow the phone to determine if you're touching it to activate the Touch ID feature. Now the design is pretty much carried over from the iPhone 5, so you still have that beautiful, thin, lightweight, aluminum unibody construction with the glass trim pieces at the top and bottom, which are color matched to the glass on the front. Uh, so on the side, you can see we have our mirrored chamfered edges, one of my favorite details here. You can see just how precisely this device is designed and assembled. Everything fits absolutely perfectly. There are no gaps. Uh, you can see that mirrored chamfered edge on the bottom you see. Uh, we have our lightning connector with that uh, chrome or metal trim piece around it. Uh, we have our, this is our mouthpiece or microphone. We have our headphone jack. We have our speaker. Along the side, you'll find your SIM tray. This is a nano SIM. 
Uh, in fact, uh, they've even color matched the SIM tray here. So if I eject it, you can take a look at that. So I'm just going to eject that SIM tray using a SIM ejection tool. And uh, you can see the SIM tray, again, supports a nano SIM. Fits absolutely perfectly here. So if you see it installed, absolutely no gaps around that SIM tray. Up top, you see your antenna brakes here. So you see antenna brakes on either side. This is part of the antenna system here, which allows the antennas to insulate from each other. Up top, you see your earpiece. Your uh, This is your front-facing camera, now an improved 1.3 megapixel camera. You also have your sensor, your proximity sensor right here, which is hard to see on the dark version. Now, if you've got the white version, you'd see it right there. Uh, up top, you have your sleep-wake button. On the other side, you have your mute switch as well as your volume controls. Now, there are a few other design differences on the back besides the color. So you see we have a new thinner iPhone font. So if you bring up the iPhone 5 here, you can see slightly thinner. It also looks like it's slightly larger than the iPhone 5. Uh, up here, you see our new camera and LED flash. So if you look really closely here, we have a single LED flash on the iPhone 5. This is also true of the iPhone 5C. Uh, we have our camera and our microphone. Up here, you see we now lose the chrome rings or metal rings around those elements instead it's just a, a flush piece of glass uh, again we have a new 8 megapixel sen sensor just like the iPhone 5 but it's a larger active area so they're able to increase the size of the microns for increased low light performance you have that new true tone flash that dual LED flash in fact you can see the color of the LEDs you see the uh, warmer color and cooler color so they're able to uh, change the color temperature of the flash depending on the scene and you can see that the microphone back there is a slightly different design it's more rounded as opposed to the oval design on the iPhone 5 now just to show you the available colors, so we have space gray, we have silver, and we have gold. So that gives you an idea of the color palette that's available. You can see that the silver and gold have the white trim pieces with the right white front panel. Um, so that is pretty much unchanged. So the space gray is the only one with the black uh, front panel. Now just to show you the color differences between space gray and slate. So we have an iPod touch and slate. This was the same color as the slate on the iPhone 5. So you can see it's quite a difference here. So this is a much darker color. Uh, and this is a bluer color versus this uh, grayer color. I actually like this quite a bit better. Now they probably did this because the durability of the slate color wasn't very good. It's easy to chip and scratch. So this color is a little more durable. It's the way they've treated the metal this time. So hopefully uh, this should be more durable for people who were concerned about the slate color scratching too easily. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this up and set it up for the first time. This will allow me to show you how to set up the new Touch ID fingerprint sensor. Now, of course, the iPhone 5S and 5C launch with iOS 7, which in itself is a massive change from iOS 6. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and set this up for the first time so you can see the setup is a little bit different with iOS 7. We're going to select our language. I don't have a SIM card installed just yet. So we're going to select my country. Uh, we're going to log into my Wi-Fi network here. All right, so I do need to install a SIM in order to activate this phone. So I'm going to pull one out of my iPhone 5. All right, let's try again. Okay, we're going to enable location services. We're going to set this up as a new iPhone for now. I'm going to sign in with my Apple ID. Now it's asking me if I want to use iCloud, and yes, I do. And it's also asking me if I want to set up Find My iPhone, which I also want to do. Now my next screen reveals my accounts for iMessaging, which I don't want to reveal, so I'm going to click Next. Now I get to set up Touch ID. So let's go ahead and set that up now. Basically, all you have to do is touch your finger to the sensor, and it will coach you along. And as you can see, it fills up the screen, or the uh, fingerprint here. So you keep doing it until it's all completed. Now it wants me to capture the edge of my finger, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I think I'm all set. Now I do need to set a passcode so if the Touch ID sensor fails to register your fingerprint, you do have a backup solution. So I do want to use Siri and I'm going to automatically send diagnostic information and we're going to get started. Alright, so let me show you how Touch ID works. So instead of seeing my passcode up here, all I have to do is tap and hold my thumb to the home button and it unlocks it for me. It works pretty well. Now if I try this with a finger that has not been registered like my other thumb here, it will not work. It says try again, try again, and it takes me to my uh, 
passcode if the third try fails. Now you can add up to five fingerprints here. So if you go to general, go to fingerprints, uh, passcode and fingerprints, enter in your passcode. You can see if we go to fingerprints here, we have the option to edit the fingerprints or add additional fingerprints. So if you go to edit here, you can even name them. So if you tap on them, you can name this right thumb or whatever. So let me go ahead and name this right thumb. All right, so I'm done. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a fingerprint and I wanna do my left thumb. So what I'm gonna do is just tap my left thumb to the sensor and go through the training process. All right, so now I want to train the edges of my finger. So in theory, I could also add other people to this profile. So if other people want to use this device, I can program one of their fingers. Now I can also enable this feature for iTunes. So iTunes and app purchases will now be able to use your uh, fingerprints in order to authorize it. So instead of having to enter your password, all you have to do is use the fingerprint sensor. So this means if I go to the app store and purchase an app I haven't purchased before, so let's go ahead and install that. It now allows me to either enter my passcode or use the fingerprint sensor. So I'm just going to use my finger here. I'm going to have to do it again. There we go. So that was successful. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's not completely bulletproof. Now a big part of the 5S story is the new camera and the LED flash as well as the new camera app which combined with the A7 processor gives us a few features which are exclusive to the 5S, at least right now. So if we launch the camera app, this is the new iOS 7 camera interface, and basically all you have to do to change your mode is swipe between them. So we have photo, square, panorama. Now the panorama mode or panorama feature has been improved, so we do get better uh, exposure compensation across the entire panorama. We have our photo mode, which also has a few features here. We have video, which is again records at 1080p at 30 frames per second, and we have slow motion mode. Now, slow motion mode basically records a video at 720p resolution at 120 frames per second. Now, when you're in slow mo mode, I'm not sure you can pick this up on this camera here, but you can see just how smooth and quick it is. It definitely stands out as something very different than uh, when you're in standard video mode. Uh, now what happens when you record in 720p or a slow-mo mode, 120 frames per second, it basically records a standard clip. Uh, so we're recording a clip right now, moving it around, click stop. Now if you want to enable the slow motion feature, you basically go to your gallery up here uh, and you get your trim head or play head up here. Uh, this is basically a quick little editor, and you see between these two lines you have the slow motion part of that segment. Now you can adjust this uh, to anything you want. You can tap on the video to activate it here. So for example, if I adjust this playhead, and I click play, and when it gets to that part of the scene, it goes into slow motion mode. Now I do have a, another segment here that is a, that's better at illustrating this. If I go to my dogs here playing in the yard, You'll see at the point it hits slow motion mode, it slows down. Now, if I go to that editor, you can see I can adjust where that slow motion segment is, and I can also adjust the length of the clip here. So I can trim the entire clip right from the gallery. Trim it, and if I go to trim, save as a new clip, it will go to my gallery. And now I have a new video with that slow motion feature built in. So as you can see, it also alters the audio, so the audio slows down as well as the clip. It works pretty well, it's very smooth, it's definitely a nice new feature. Now in terms of our standard still camera, so in addition to the hardware improvements, we also have some interesting software improvements. So we have electronic stabilization, so basically it's able to take a bunch of photos all at once, about five photos, automatically stitches them together to give you the best photo. So that is pretty much imperceptible, you don't notice it when you're taking the photo, it just works in the background, that's thanks to the power of that processor. Now we also have burst mode, so if you tap and hold the shutter release, it will take as many photos as you need until you're done. So you can see it's really quick. So if you go to your gallery, instead of having dozens upon dozens of the same shot, you instead have a single thumbnail for that specific gallery. So you can see burst mode, 22 photos were taken. If you go to favorites, you can see all of those photos that were taken and you can select which one was your favorite. So you can jump to any part of that timeline here to select the photo you want. Now in terms of the new flash here, you can see that kind of fire simultaneously. So it's kind of hard to see on the camera here. 
uh, but it will automatically adjust the flash color to the specific scene, which works out pretty well. Now in case you're curious, if you turn on the LED flash as your flashlight, only the bright white LED is illuminated, not both LEDs. So you can see the top one here is illuminated, but the bottom one is not. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the performance, the synthetic performance of the iPhone 5S versus the iPhone 5. So this will give you a relative idea of the performance gains from last year's model. So you can see uh, we're running very similar specs. We have the same uh, 1 gig of RAM. The processor is clocked about 1.3 gigahertz. Uh, if we go to my benchmarks, you can see there's a huge difference in performance, however. So you can see, like they said, we would double the performance from the iPhone 5, and I think we've bested even that. So the huge gains here in the synthetic scores. Uh, you can see that Geekbench 3 is telling me that this is running a dual core processor uh, again at 1.3 gigahertz and again 1 gig of RAM. So definitely an improvement in overall performance. Now before I leave I just want to show you the other colors of the iPhone 5S all put together so you get an idea of what you may prefer. So again you have the space gray with the black glass trim pieces and the silver and gold with all the white trim pieces. All right, guys, that's going to do for me in this video. But before I leave, I'd love to know what you guys think of these three colors. Which is your favorite, gold, space gray, or silver? Please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.